WFN Green examines the 40 plus years of cleanup the Cuyahoga River has undergone since the once heavily polluted waterway caught fire. It wasn't our only fire, but it was our last fire. And uh, we had several fires before that that were larger, perhaps more destructive. But this is the fire that really caught the attention of the city, the state, and the nation. That it was really time to do something with America's waterways. The conditions in the river at the time were that most dumping was not illegal. And so the river was full of a lot of petroleum byproducts that were discharged in the river. They were mixed with a lot of other kinds of urban um, floating debris. And it made a pretty uh, disgusting swill of, uh, in the river. And it was very flammable. It jammed up under a railroad bridge, uh, sparked, set it on fire. And uh, it was burned long enough and hot enough to damage the bridge and to shut down a steel mill for a couple of weeks. And uh, that got everybody's attention, too, and it had a big impact on local employment. But since then, there's been enormous amounts of investment and recovery that's taken place in the river. When there were fish studies done in the early 70s and late 60s, there were nine total fish found in the main stem of the river uh, of two species. And Forty years later, we can find over 40 different species of fish in the thousands. We have essentially achieved full fish population recovery as far as these standards go for Ohio. Eliminating sources of stress and dumping from point discharges had a big impact. And changing the way we interact with the river in terms of non-point sources, uh, uh, discharge from sewage treatment plants, industrial waste, all played a big impact on the river. A program was developed called the American Heritage Rivers Initiative, which designated essentially the most needy river systems uh, for special attention by the federal government. So 14 rivers were designated. The Cuyahoga was one. Uh, the Detroit is the other of the two in the Great Lakes, and the other 12 are in other parts of the country. The, the purpose of the American Heritage River system was to provide unique federal attention and also a, uh, uh, what's called a river navigator. That's a role I hold, which is to help the stakeholders navigate federal red tape and to coalesce funding. So that's an important role, and it's a unique role that the American Heritage Rivers play. All 14 rivers have um, been successful in different ways in their own river communities. Ours is very much focused on uh, uh, environmental restoration of the river. People know that recovery does in fact happen and people want to continue. It's a source of enormous pride. Where the fire had always been a source of enormous embarrassment, now the recovery is a source of pride. And people want to continue the effort. We're seeing in investment to regentrify the lower section of the river, housing, retail. Offices are now locating in the ship channel area where before it was uh, untenable. So I think even think of locating in these areas. And so success begets success, investment begets investment, and we're seeing that momentum. And that's certainly a story that other rivers are engaged in around the Great Lakes. And I think you'll, they will also demonstrate the, the magnitude of, a, of fish recovery, aquatic population, and just pure water cleanliness that uh, we're enjoying here.